welcome uh, this is the second lecture of module 1 uh, this the, in this lecture uh, we'll start introduction to tensor uh, as discussed in the last week last class uh, so here uh, basically the objective is uh, familiarity with the initial notation and uh, uh, the basic tensor algebra and tensor calculus which will be helpful for learning this course. So, um, uh, before uh, we directly goes to tensor operations, uh, so let us first understand what is tensor. So, uh, for instance all of us uh, know that uh, scalar, vector and uh, the new quantity here is actually the tensor. Now, uh, scalar uh, as we know it has only uh, one value uh, means it has magnitude, it does not have any direction or anything. Uh, so, uh, for instance time, density these are the scalars. Now, um, this is uh, very important that um, um, we should uh, or we will represent uh, scalars with the uh, small letters or symbols. Uh, in this course. Uh, in a different book you will find uh, a different uh, um, co uh, convention, but uh, in this course we will uh, uh, represent scalar with a small letters or symbols. So, um, uh, in case of a scalar addition and scalar uh, uh, subtraction or multiplication its uh, values gets only altered, but in case of a vector uh, it is uh, always a uh, always have a direction as well as magnitude for instance velocity displacement these are the vectors so we know what is vector addition we know what is vector uh, subtraction or uh, multiplication so uh, vectors will be re, uh, represented by the small bold letters and symbols so this is important because uh, we can distinguish from the quantity itself what type of quantity it is. So, now uh, the tensor. So, tensor uh, is actually uh, um, the new quantity we need to uh, understand what is tensor. So, let us uh, uh, first uh, uh, understand uh, the vector little bit more. So, vector is uh, uh, always written in terms of its component along the axis. Uh, for instance, if it is a, a Cartesian coordinate system, our unit vectors in the Cartesian coordinate system are i, j, k and then a vector p can be represented in terms of i, uh, p 1, i, p 2, j and p 3, k. So, p 1, p 2 and p 3 are components along x, y, z directions. So, uh, similarly we can uh, define unit vector, unit vector is uh, the vector for which the uh, magnitude is 1. So, um, uh, unit value, uh, but the uh, it has the direction same as the vector. So, any vector n can be transformed into an unit vector by dividing its magnitude. So, also uh, magnitude we uh, know what is magnitude of a vector, it is the uh, for instance uh, in this example uh, 2i plus 3j and 4k uh, are the, um, uh, the vector uh, we can transform it to uh, unit vector of this form. So, now um, any vector in any uh, general coordinate system uh, um, may be spherical, may be cylindrical or general curvilinear coordinate system we can express it as component wise. So, E 1, E 2 and E 3 are the basis vector on that coordinate system and we can represent any vector uh, uh, according to its component along E 1 direction, E 2 direction and E 3 direction. So, uh, uh, in general uh, vector vectors uh, can be uh, in general vectors can are represented in terms of component, but uh, we will learn how to uh, uh, ease this process through the initial uh, notation. Now, um, first let us introduce what is tensor. So, tensor uh, uh, among tensor uh, we will first introduce what is uh, second order tensor. So, let me first uh, uh, read out the definition 
the a second order tensor is a linear transformation which transform a vector to another vector. So, this uh, example, this definition is very helpful to understand the higher order uh, tensors actually. For instance, uh, uh, in case of a second order tensor, uh, uh, any matrix, any square matrix can be uh, considered as a second order tensor. For, uh, as we know that matrix vector equation A x equals to B, uh, the matrix A transforms the vector x uh, to another vector B. So, A is a second order tensor. So, here, so A, this A matrix A is known as the uh, uh, coefficient matrix of the uh, uh, solution of the system of equation. This uh, matrix A is known as the second order tensor. So, second order tensor or any tensor will be present by the capital bold letters or symbols. So, uh, for instance, uh, we have learned the scalars have no directions, uh, vectors have only one direction. So, a second order tensor have two direction. So, in a um, similar argument, if we say fourth order uh, tensor, so it will have a four direction components. So, uh, even though it looks very unphysical uh, from a 3D, three dimensional space, but we will understand it. Uh, for our uh, this course. So, in uh, for example, the stress tensor which all of you probably know from the solid mechanics uh, course or stress matrix is it has a this form and this tensor uh, this matrix is known as a second order this matrix is a second order tensor. So, similarly, the strain matrix is also a uh, second order tensor. Now, why it is called second order tensor because it has a two direction component. So, first component as we know it represents the uh, direction of normal and second one is the uh, um, direction at which uh, it is acting. For instance, sigma 1, 2 or sigma x, y if I uh, uh, try to understand what is sigma x, y uh, then uh, the normal direction is uh, along x and it is acting on the uh, y direction. So, uh, similarly sigma x x and other uh, uh, components can be understood. So, uh, in general, uh, uh, so if a train, if I want to uh, uh, define higher order tensor, so for instance, uh, if I uh, uh, want to define a higher order uh, tensor or a fourth order tensor, so fourth order tensor, how can, how can I define? I can define in this way that uh, a fourth order tensor is a transformation which transform a second order tensor to another second order tensor. Likewise, uh, the definition of second order tensor which is uh, a uh, vector to another vector. So, essentially uh, uh, in this way we can define matrix itself. The matrix is essentially a linear transformation which transform a vector space to another vector, vector space. So, uh, uh, several examples of second order tensor we observe. For instance, a identity tensor, identity tensor for of which a identity matrix of any order we represent it by I n. So, this is also a second order tensor. Now, um, uh, uh, right now we will uh, only uh, um, learn about second order tensor and then uh, uh, in the later part of this uh, module we will also learn what is fourth order tensor and it is used for us. So, uh, so a vector uh, as uh, we were discussing in the last slide, a vector can be represented in the component form. Now, uh, if you look carefully that um, if I uh, want to, if I fix the coordinate system for which the basis is E 1, E 2 and E 3, then we can simply write it as E uh, summation of I to 3 E y E i. Now, this E i uh, is a uh, unit vectors. So, uh, now for our ease of uh, writing we can simply uh, remove this summation symbol and if I write u equals to u i and e i and if we assume that i repeats from 1 to 3, then this uh, type of uh, representation is very helpful for us. Uh, 
because we will uh, we not to write this summation. And so, uh, this uh, type of summation, uh, the removal of this type of implied summation is known as Einstein con convention or the um, initial notation. For instance, if I uh, want to write u i i and if I assume that i repeats from uh, 1 to 3, then uh, it is simply u 1 1, u 2 2 plus u 3 3. So, similarly, if I uh, want to write u i v j e j, e j is the e is the um, uh, unit vector, then u i is first summed and then v j e j. So, v j e j is again summed uh, uh, as per the uh, 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 as per our understanding of I, uh, rep uh, j repeats from 1 to uh, 3. So, in this uh, way we can reduce our computation or we need not to write every uh, vector or every uh, tensor in a component form. So, this is essentially for uh, ease of our notational uh, notation or also, it is known as tensorial representation. Sometimes we will uh, also use only tensorial notation, uh, notation. So, in a component form, uh, we will understand it uh, through the indicial notation. Now, while doing this, uh, we introduce two uh, indices one is dummy index, another is free index. So, what is uh, dummy index? An index which does not appear in equation after summation is carried out is known as dummy index. Dummy index cannot be repeated more than two times. So, we will see uh, all this uh, during this course and uh, uh, we will also mention there. So, for instance, if I want to write uh, this summation, then uh, uh, it, it, it is implied that u i e i uh, it is rep uh, uh, repeated uh, 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 till i equals to 1 to 3. So, uh, the free index, free index is a generic index which can have any initial form. For instance, if I want to write a, if I write this expression, what this mean a i j x i is the i is the dummy index here uh, and j is the free index. So, uh, uh, here uh, we, uh, uh, we can assume uh, the value of j eh, and then uh, uh, do all summations over i. So, this is uh, the two types of index we have to keep in mind and uh, we will uh, always use this type of uh, uh, notation to represent our quantities. For instance, the kinematic quantities or the uh, derived quantities. So, um, now uh, let us see some example. If I uh, write y i a i j x j, then I can simply uh, assume i uh, for, or I can simply write in terms of i a i 1 x 1 a i 2 x 2 and i 3 x 3 so on. So, similarly for a different i uh, which is uh, y 1 equals to a 1 1 x 1 and so on. So, in a vector representation if I write a i it means that it has uh, three components because we will mostly work for, uh, with the three component. Hmm, form in three dimensional space. So, i, uh, I varies from 1 to 3. Similarly, if we want to write a component of a matrix a i j. So, a i j means it is all component of a matrix and if the matrix is of dimension or order 3, uh, then uh, it uh, runs from i equals to uh, 1 to 3 to j equals to 1 to 3. So, this uh, re type of representation will shorten our uh, writing and this is the only reason we are doing this. So, similarly vector addition if I write uh, uh, a i b i that means each component of uh, a i uh, is uh, added with the uh, uh, corresponding component of the b i. So, a 1 b 1 uh, a 2 b 2 and a 3 b 3. Similarly, um, matrix addition is also uh, component wise addition and which can be uh, understood from this uh, uh, symbolism. So, now uh, scalar multiplication, the scalar multiplication is also similar to that. So, if I multiply uh, a i with a scalar lambda, then um, uh, it is multiplied with the all component. 
So, uh, uh, another uh, important uh, thing which probably you have not learned in solid mechanics is the dyadic product or the uh, outer product or sometimes it is also known as tensor product. So, um, um, uh, it is A i B j. So, if I write A tensor product B, uh, A tensor product B, so it is simply A i B j. Now, uh, what does this mean A i B j? So, uh, where i runs from uh, 1 to uh, 3 and j runs from 1 to uh, 3. So, similarly, A 1, B 1, A 2, B 2, A 3, B 3 and so on. So, uh, th this type of uh, uh, symbolism also we will be using here. And uh, another uh, uh, which probably all of you know the inner product or dot product of two vector which is a dot b. So, a dot b is uh, we write it uh, a 1 e 1 uh, is a uh, uh, two vectors if we write in this form that is a 1 e 1 plus a 2 e 2 plus a 3 e 3 a and then uh, b is also similarly we write a 2 uh, sorry b 1 e 1 and plus b 2 e 2 and b 3 e 3. So, if we take dot product between two vectors we know that e i uh, e j equals to 1 when uh, i equals to j and this dot product will uh, uh, um, ultimately produce a scalar which is a i b i. So, which is essentially if you write e with the summation convention a 1 b 1 a 2 b 2 and a 3 b 3. So, uh, this is the uh, way we will represent here. So, it is very important to understand these uh, notations because uh, 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 in this process we can shorten our uh, uh, representation. Now, uh, uh, so, for instance, decomposition of a second order tensor into a symmetric and skew symmetric part. I think uh, uh, those of you who have uh, learned the matrix uh, algebra, then probably uh, you must have uh, known this that any uh, vector or a, any matrix can be represented in terms of a uh, skew symmetric matrix and a symmetric matrix. So, any matrix A, a can be represented, uh, represented like this A plus A transpose plus half of A minus A transpose. Right. So, this if we want to write it in terms of uh, initial notation, it looks like this. So, A i j is the component of A and A j i is the component of A transpose and uh, similarly the this part also we can write. So, here generally we represent the symmetric part is uh, with a first bracket and anti-symmetric part or skew symmetric part with the third bracket. So, this, uh, this expression is actually equivalent with the matrix expression this. So, this is uh, essentially the tensorial notation and this is essentially the indicial notation. So, we have to, uh, uh, we, we may use both of them uh, to write the uh, our uh, quantities. So, when we write in terms of this, so it is uh, implied that each components are uh, um, added properly. So, for instance, uh, if I uh, give some example, so if this is a matrix A and this is a vector B, then its component wise it is right, uh, like this. So, if I write A i i, which is the all summation of all diagonal elements 1, 4, 2, which is 7. So, uh, for your information, this is also known as the trace, trace of matrix A, which is A i i, right. And then uh, if I uh, want to uh, take the dot product with the uh, vector V or B dot B, then as we have seen earlier, which is B i B i or um, uh, the square of each uh, components of B. So, which turns out to be the 20. So, similarly, uh, we can um, use, uh, we can give other examples also. For instance, B i B j. So, if I want to uh, do tensor product between uh, the same uh, vectors or uh, the, um, uh, for instance, B tensor product B, 
if I want to do. So, this uh, will uh, turn out to be the B i B j. So, uh, this will uh, uh, be this. So, component wise it looks in this form. Now, uh, one should understand here this dyadic product or the tensor product increase the dimension. So, uh, essentially B was a uh, single um, direction or a B was a vector and then when we do uh, its tensor product it is a it becomes a tensor and it is a second order tensor. So, similarly, a i j or the symmetric part of the uh, hmm, uh, matrix we can write it in this form. So, uh, similarly, if I want if I want to multiply vector uh, B with the matrix A which is essentially A i j B j. So, we can write the component form in this way. So, uh, the first row this is if I take uh, the i and then similarly we can multiply with the uh, corresponding vectors of b. So, this uh, is helpful in understanding the uh, tensorial notation. Now, uh, we will define what is Kronecker delta. I think uh, uh, you have uh, uh, learned this uh, in your solid mechanics course, but just to uh, uh, review uh, this Kronecker delta is a uh, actually an operator or a, in a similar to uh, uh, um, uh, what we have used in solid mechanics. Uh, so, delta i j or it has uh, um, very uh, interesting property. The property is when i not equals to j, then uh, it is 0, when i equals to 1, it is uh, i equals to j, it is 1. So, generally we will use 3 dimensional Kronecker delta which represents the identity matrix because all i j's are different here. So, this will become 0 all of diagonal elements. So, the properties of Kronecker delta since it is a uh, um, diagonal matrix, its transpose will be the same uh, diagonal matrix. So, so, that means delta i j is uh, delta j i and its stress will be always 3 and if I want to multiply with a vector with the Kronecker delta, the vector will remain same. So, this uh, uh, and if I want to uh, uh, multiply a uh, matrix, the matrix will not change. So, similarly delta i j delta j k I can write 3. So, this is the property of the Kronecker delta. We need to uh, remember these properties because uh, sometimes we will use these properties. Now, uh, another uh, symbol or another uh, operator we will use is permutation uh, symbol or Levi Civita symbol. So, for instance, the uh, permutation symbol is known as the uh, epsilon i j k. So, it has you see the i runs from 1 to 3, j runs from 1 to 3 and uh, k runs from uh, 1 to 3. So, total 3 cross 3 cross 3 that means there are 27 components of this uh, uh, operator. So, if you look carefully that a second order tensor has total 3 cross 3 components. So, stress matrix for instance or stress tensor uh, for instance is have 3 cross 3 component right. So, it has 6 uh, component, but this uh, permutation symbol is essentially 27 components. So, this is actually uh, if sigma is a second order tensor, then permutation symbol is actually a third order tensor because it is the 27 components. So, we understand what is third order tensor here. Now, uh, this permutation symbol like Kronecker delta has a um, property that if i j k uh, uh, if we write in even permutation, then this permutation symbol will be 1 and if i j k, if we write in odd permutation, uh, uh, this will be odd, odd permutation I, then it will have uh, also 3 component which will uh, be um, uh, uh, minus 1. So, for instance, if I write 1, 2, 3, uh, epsilon 1, 2, 3, this will be 1, then 2, 3, 1, this will be also 1 and epsilon 3, 1, 2, this is 1. 
So, if uh, I change this flip these two that is if I write 1 3 2 then this will be minus 1 and if it is any one is repeated here then it will be always 0. So, if you look carefully then you will see that 21 such components will be 0 and there will be 6 uh, such components which will be non-zero which is either 3 of which will be plus 1 and 3 of which will be minus 1. So, for instance, we can use this permutation symbol to evaluate the determinant of a matrix. So, uh, if the matrix A is, uh, we know the determinant of a matrix already. So, if we write it, so it will be like this. So, uh, you can uh, use uh, um, pen and paper to uh, e expand this expression and check whether this will uh, this goes to the determinant of a matrix or not. So, now um, uh, for instance another application is cross product. So, all of us know what is cross product. So, uh, which is E 1, E 2 and E 3, A 1, E 2 and determ uh, determinant of that. So, if I write it in terms of permutation symbols which is essentially um, epsilon i j k, e i and then uh, a j b k. So, the component wise form is just you remove the E i the vector uh, unit vector term. Now, similarly scalar triple product. So, scalar triple product uh, uh, we know which is a dot b cross c something like that here u dot v cross w. So, v and w uh, if we write it in initial form it will just we can write v j e j and w k e k. So, you um, if I write uh, v j e j and w k e k in terms of this form or this form then finally, we can write the scalar triple product is epsilon i j k u j v j w k. So, this is um, another uh, important uh, relation or identity is that relating uh, this permutation symbol with the Kronecker delta. Uh, um, so, if I uh, if I uh, write or uh, if I want to relate this, so epsilon i j k is epsilon uh, uh, into epsilon m n k should be of this. So, this is an important relation and this requires uh, to prove some of our uh, um, relations or some of the theorems. So, uh, uh, then uh, we will see the coordinate transformation. So, coordinate transformation already you have understood in the uh, solid mechanics course. So, we know if we uh, rotate a uh, coordinate uh, uh, axis about uh, something or about a vector. So, we can write uh, we, we arrive a uh, new coordinate system x prime uh, y prime z prime and our initial uh, coordinate system was uh, uh, x y z. So, the relation between these two coordinate system are uh, already uh, known to us which is E i uh, prime is q i j e j. So, E i is the this is vectors in uh, x y uh, z coordinate system and prime uh, basis vectors are E prime j. So, now um, we know that q i j's are the direction cosines, right. So, this q uh, becomes a rotation matrix. Now, for 3D uh, this uh, looks uh, if I want to instead of a basis vector if I want to transform a vector then which is uh, simply e, we know from the uh, calculations that uh, L 1 u m 1 v n 1 uh, w. So, L 1 m 1 n 1 are uh, direction cosines. So, similarly in 2D we can transform a uh, vector which is L 1 uh, and uh, L 1 u and M 1 v. So, um, this is well known to us, but if I want to transform a tensor, uh, uh, how should I do? So, before we do, it, uh, do that, let us see uh, that how we transform our strain or stresses in uh, our solid mechanics course. If you remember carefully that uh, that prime quantity strains 
and prime quantities uh, uh, x x strains and prime quantities y y strains and x y prime y prime the engineering stress the uh, strains the these are related with the non prime quantity or non prime coordinate axis strains with this. So, if you uh, look carefully these are the cos theta square sin theta square cos theta sin theta and so on. So, um, if we write now the strains in vector format which is also known as the uh, uh, void notation. Uh, so, these uh, tensors we can write in a vector form which is of this form. So, this is a void notation. So, if you write uh, prime quantities in a vector format and the non prime quantities in vector format, then these two are related with a matrix of this form. This is not a rotation matrix because the rotation matrix is L, um, M, L1, M1 and N1 in uh, 3D and for 2D which is L1, M1 uh, and M1, um, uh, L2, M2. So, uh, but this matrix is the transformation matrix for the strains. Now, you see, uh, so uh, we can understand from this uh, configuration or the uh, transformation of strains that each of these uh, direction cosines are multiplied twice and the reason is that because strain is not a vector, strain is a tensor. So, it has two direction. So, if I write it in a more formal notation, so it comes out to be a strain is this. So, prime quantity strains which is he here it is a tensor and the non prime quantity strains are related with the rotation matrix Q is in this way. So, Q is um, epsilon prime is Q epsilon Q transpose and if I write it in initial notation it is of this form. So, uh, uh, the reason why this transformation uh, is like this because strain has two directions not one direction. So, for instance in the previous slide we have seen how to rotate a vector. So, a vector is essentially a um, one direction uh, it has one direction. So, if I want to rotate a vector, so it is essentially multiplying the uh, pre multiplying the uh, rotation matrix. Since strain is a uh, um, tensor, our transformation of trends looks like this. So, similarly for 3D we can uh, um, formulate it. So, if I write it in this, I think this uh, uh, um, uh, expression you are familiar in solid mechanics. So, this is essentially this. So, these uh, strains this is in tensor format and this is in void notation. So, uh, uh, this actually uh, um, uh, uh, um, formalize how we uh, learn uh, how we represent or how we uh, rotate tensors in um, um, uh, 3D. So, now uh, um, we will uh, go for what is called principal direction. So, principal direction is uh, all of us know what is principal stress on which that uh, there is no uh, shear stress right. So, how it comes? So, um, uh, as we know that uh, uh, that it is an eigenvalue problem. So, if I uh, write uh, the corresponding eigenvalue problem um, which is uh, um, uh, if A is a matrix its eigenvalue is date of A minus lambda i equals to 0 that we know and this is essentially the characteristics equation which represents the uh, uh, three roots of a eigenvalue lambda and then uh, these i 1, i 2 and i 3 are also uh, we know from our solid mechanics knowledge that trace of a is i 1 and trace of uh, and i 2 is uh, all summation of all uh, cofactors and then uh, i 3 is essentially the um, determinant. So, these I 1, I 2, I 3 are known as the invariant of matrix A which is a second order tensor and this um, what is this invariant mean? Invariant means if you rotate this um, uh, matrix A these invariants I 1, I 2 and I 3 will not change. The component of this matrix may change, but these quantities will not change. Now, uh, 
So, uh, as we were discussing eigenvalue and eigenvector, so uh, solution of characteristics equation uh, will give three roots which are called eigenvalue and these eigenvalues are uh, each for each eigenvalue there is a eigenvector. So, after uh, finding out the eigenvalue, the uh, eigenvalue matrix will look like this and so, um, uh, those of you uh, who have little uh, knowledge about null space or uh, the vector space knowledge. So, we can say these eigenvectors are in the null space of A minus lambda i. So, the number lambda is chosen such that A minus lambda i has its null space and A minus lambda i must be singular. So, uh, this uh, lambda is eigenvalue o if and on only if this date of A minus lambda i equals to 0. So, these things we know. So, now uh, with an example we can uh, see that how to calculate this eigenvalues. So, um, this is a matrix. So, the all invariants we can compute and this then characteristics equation we can find out and we can find out the roots of the characteristics equation which is 2 minus 5 and 5 and then uh, uh, we can compute its uh, uh, eigenvector. For instance, the computation one uh, computation of one of the eigenvector is this and then uh, finally, we can compute the eigenvector matrix. Right. So, uh, um, I stop here today. So, um, in the next class, we will uh, also uh, uh, review some of the uh, matrix uh, algebra and tensor analysis and then uh, we will uh, mostly uh, discuss about the tensor algebra. Thank you.